If you think the smartphone market has reached a saturation point, I say you are mistaken because foldable phones are going to be the next big thing in the smartphone space. And Samsung has gotten off to a good start with the Galaxy Z Fold and Galaxy Z Flip series. Today we will talk about the fourth generation of the Galaxy Z Flip. My colleague Johan Castell spent some time with the phone and here is what he thinks about it. This is the Galaxy Z Flip 4, Samsung's latest clamshell foldable phone. The phone is available in India for you to buy, but the question is, should you buy it? We got our hands on the phone and used it for a while. But before we tell you what works for us and what doesn't, let's take a quick look at the key specifications. As you can see, the phone offers a foldable screen in a compact form factor, similar to what we have seen in the predecessors. When unfolded, the phone has a 6.7-inch Full HD Plus display. There's also a 1.9-inch Super AMOLED cover screen for notifications. The Galaxy Z Flip 4 features two 12-megapixel cameras at the back. The front, on the other hand, has a 10-megapixel shooter. The foldable phone packs a 3700 mAh battery, which is slightly bigger than the one in the Galaxy Z Flip 3. The Galaxy Z Flip 4 is engineered with the latest Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset and runs on the Android 12 operating system. So this is the Samsung Galaxy C Flip 4 and I've never tried any of these flip phones before but I have to say I've been kind of wanting to. The first thing that struck me when I tried it and played around with it is that it just oozes of good build quality. It's heavier than I expected and the mechanism for opening and closing the phone it's just a lot more confidence inspiring than I was expecting. It looks really good. It, it's such a statement piece. I could see how this is for people that are really into, say, having a statement piece as a phone. I like the design. It feels like it's made of really high quality materials and the glossy parts uh, of the metal, it, it, it certainly catches fingerprints really easily, but the matte areas of the device are, are much less prone to uh, fingerprints. When it comes to uh, the screen, I think the screen is really bright. It's really nice brightness on it. And uh, with this screen, it also saves uh, the battery by reducing the refresh rate when you're not using like a higher demanding application. In terms of the battery life, the battery has been increased from last year's model from 3300 milliamp hours to 3700 milliamp hours along with also getting a more power efficient processor in the phone. It has dramatically increased the battery life of the device. It's not as much as a flagship, of course, but I think that it, it certainly lasts an entire day with no issues, for me at least. It's such a small device, you know, it, it's, really a, it, it, it's really convenient that this is basically a full-size phone when it's opened up. And when you fold it together, it's just barely over 10 centimeters big across and it just fits in your shirt pocket. It's just so convenient. Now, I do like to have big phones and large phones. And I know that for a lot of people, a large phone might not fit in their pocket, but this phone, I think, will fit in any pocket. It is so small. Even a small handbag, it would be easy to fit this phone anywhere. I'm quite pleasantly surprised by just how cool this device is. It's really quite unique. And the performance of the phone when it comes to um, the processor inside, it's got a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chip inside, which is the latest one from Snapdragon, the most powerful chip. And the performance, there's really no complaints about the performance whatsoever. It performs really well. To have such performance in a small phone like this, it's really impressive. The phone looks promising, but is it ready for the mass market? Does it have everything that you would expect from a top-of-the-line phone? 
Most importantly, should you spend around 1 lakh rupees, which is about $1260 on buying it. The Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4, is it for you? Well, what I think is that the phone is too expensive at nearly 90,000 rupees for a 128 gigabyte model and nearly 95,000 rupees for the 256 gigabyte model. I do think it is too much money because for that amount of money, you could get a phone, which is a flagship phone with a flagship camera. Now, this phone does not have a flagship camera. Don't get me wrong, the phone camera is good, but it is not flagship quality. Um, another thing is, with any kind of foldable device, you will get a crease where it folds, obviously. Now the question is, is that something that you can live with? For some people, it might become more annoying over time, and for others, it might become less annoying over time. So that's, I guess, a personal preference. For me, I think that for this amount of money, I'd rather just buy a regular flagship. If you prefer this really small statement piece and form factor, then perhaps this phone is for you.